everyone, welcome back to the channel with me, your host, Oolong! I gotta say, I really had a lot of fun doing last week's top 10 turn-based RPGs! But as much as I love turn-based games, there's something truly amazing about an RPG that gives you the freedom of movement during battle! So to keep that RPG hype going, we're gonna count down the top 10 action RPG series! Hold that thought! Well, well, if it isn't the pig, did I hear you say something about action RPGs? Oh my gosh, guys, joining me today, we have the truly fearsome Lord Fryza. Uh, uh, uh how, how are you doing on this fine day? Oh yes, it is indeed me, Lord of the Fryzas. Okay, okay, hi, by the way. And I was doing quite well, flying through the sky just having some me time, before I heard a bunch of racket down here and came to investigate. Oh yeah, just, uh, talking about the top 10 action RPGs. Well, lucky for you, Piglet. I happen to know a thing or two about those. I'll be joining you on your little video. <laughs> oh god. You okay there, pal? Oh, it's nothing to worry about. Just a case of evil laughter. It happens. Well, all right then, let's roll it. Number 10. You know what cooks my bacon? Games that are way too damn hard! I mean, I get the sense of accomplishment from overcoming tough challenges and everything, but there's no need to make something so difficult that it pushes your player to the breaking point, and there's no doubt the Souls series is designed to break you! I can't even tell you how many times I've just died and died and died and died and died and died and Whoa, whoa there, Piggy! Ease up! You're gonna blow a blood vessel! Don't tell me to ease up, you dildo-headed underside- Finish that sentence, and I'll cook your bacon! You're, uh, uh, uh you're not worth it. As he was saying, the Soul series began with Demon Soul for the PlayStation 3 in 2009, with its most recent release being Dark Souls 3 in 2016 for the PS4 and Xbox One and the PC. These are played in a third-person perspective and focus on weapon and magic-based combat with monsters and exploration. Another trope of the series is the Stamina Gauge, which will punish you for spamming attacks. Defeated enemies usually drop souls, which are then used to level up your character and purchase different items. The game actually uses deaths to teach players how to handle themselves in any given situation. Learning from past mistakes and overcoming those insanely difficult boss fights through careful planning and execution feels incredibly rewarding. You just gotta get good, son. Number 9! Y'all should know by now that I'm a big lover of the Final Fantasy series. And while it doesn't officially make this list, it can in spirit. The Mana series, or Saiken Densetsu, meaning Legend of the Sacred Sword in Japan, is a medieval fantasy action role-playing game series developed formerly by Square and is currently owned by Square Enix. It began as a handheld side story to Square's flagship franchise Final Fantasy in 1991, but changed to become its own series starting with the second game, Secret of Mana, my personal favorite. With recurrent stories involving a world tree, it's so with its holy sword and the fight against forces that would steal their power. Several character designs, creatures, and musical themes appear frequently. Another common theme is the seamless real-time battle system developed by Kochi Ishii and improved upon by Hiromichi Tanaka out of a desire to create a system different from the one featured in the first few Final Fantasy titles. The first few games had a ring command system, making it stand out a lot from other titles at the time. Mana spirits govern the magic of the world and are the core of the game's magic system as they are used to cast magic spells. Doesn't matter which game you pick, sit down and get ready for an epic tale you won't forget. Number 8! Come to think of it, there isn't enough games that put emphasis on player choice. Getting to choose your own adventure is not only incredibly fun, but adds a hell of a lot of replay value. And few games do this as well as the Mass Effect series. The Mass Effect games merge role-playing game mechanics with squad-based third-person shooter combat. They take place in the same futuristic universe with a story that spans all the games. A new threat has appeared. A race of ancient non-organic predators known as Reapers, whose goal is to exterminate all organic life. There is but one hope for the universe, the one and only Commander Shepard. This is war. People die. Shep Shepard is totally customizable, everything from your gender and appearance to the six different character classes, all with different firearms, tech abilities, and bionic powers. The combat is very reminiscent of Gears of War. Although you directly control Shepard, you can direct your companions to do specific things in battle. You will have to make tons of crucial choices throughout the games, most of which have an impact on how events play out, allowing you to shape your own story and become a law-abiding leader. Honorable Paragon or the rebellious self-centered renegade, something that I would go for. Shepard can also get hot and heavy with a companion, assuming you have chosen the right actions. Woo! <laughs> oh damn! Number 7!
In the world of RPGs, standing up from the competition can be difficult. You'd think there's only so many times you can tweak an RPG formula and then call yourself unique. And Capcom had the right idea when they made Monster Hunter. You play a hunter either killing or capturing large monsters and cooking amazing food. And of course, visiting the village nearby to occasionally drop off your goods. Mobs that you hunt will frequently travel between areas on the map, forcing you to re-engage them at a later point in time. And they will actually heal up if you give them enough time. Most of them have a pattern, though, that they will move around in, so pay attention and you'll eventually take them down. Unlike other RPGs that allow you to level up and improve your character, in Monster Hunter, you use the loot drops from the creatures you defeat to craft weapons and armor, themed after that creature. This adds a new spin on progression, making your gear your main focus. While the series originally started as a single-player experience, later installments have added multiplayer, making the game much more intense and enjoyable. There's nothing like going on a good hunt with a bunch of your friends, so long as you don't run into a damn Rathalos. I hear the new one coming out in 2018 will have Steam multiplayer. Hell yeah, I can't wait! Number 6! You know, speaking about Monster Hunters, that reminds me of another amazing game. The Witcher is a fantasy series of short stories and novels about the Witcher, Geralt of Rivia. Witchers are monster hunters who, with training and body modification, develop supernatural abilities to battle deadly beasts. A time-delayed decision consequence system was used, so repercussions of players' decisions won't actually show up into later parts of the game. This prompts players to put more critical thinking into each decision, and prevents people from saving and reloading to try and try out different decisions. The combat in The Witcher is far different than most RPGs. You get to choose any one of three fighting styles, at any time to suit your situation. With fast, strong, and group styles at your disposal, you can handle almost anything. Geralt also has two different swords that you'll be switching between, using the steel sword to fight off humans, while using the silver sword to fight against monsters and other supernatural enemies. Adds another layer of depth to battles. Alchemy is a major part of gameplay. The player can create potions that increase various stats, give Geralt night vision, or provide other beneficial effects. The recipes for these potions can be learned through scrolls or by experimenting by yourself. Just be careful though, because if one of the potions you swallow was a failure, you could get poisoned or worse. The third installment, which a wild hunt, is by far the best in the series, receiving Game of the Year awards from gaming, publications, critics, and award events, and is considered one of the greatest games of all time. Number 5! Most people only go through life with four limbs. That is, until I reduce the number. Personally, there is a wonder to having a fifth appendage, though. <laughs> I do love my tail. Just another reason I have appreciation for the Tales series. Starting with Tales of Fantasia for the Super Famicom in 1995, the series currently spans 16 main titles, multiple spin-off games as well as manga series, anime series, and audio dramas. While entries in the series generally stand independent of each other with different characters and stories, they are commonly linked by their gameplay, themes, and high fantasy settings. The series is known for its art style, which is alike to Japanese manga and anime, and its action-based fighting system called the Linear Motion Battle System. This is a real-time fighting system similar to a brawler. Most tail games have little side conversations between different characters that can both be dramatic and comedic in nature. <laughs> Hashtag freezable. They are commonly portrayed as character portraits or profiles, with text along the bottom of the screen. Another recurring feature is the cooking system, where characters learn and prepare dishes to restore health and forms of experience points. So get ready to cook up some gourmet dishes before you tackle those bosses. Number 4. Anyone here a fan of the post-apocalyptic setting? That dystopian future kind of setup where everything seems bleak. Civilization is but a shadow of its former self. Now, I've laid waste to a few civilizations in my day, but the Fallout series is one truly worth remembering. Starting on the PC and Mac back in 1997, Fallout is set in a fictionalized United States in an alternate history scenario that diverged from our reality following World War II. The US divides itself and the aesthetics and Cold War paranoia of the 1950s continue to dominate the American lifestyle well into the 21st century. Having foreseen this outcome decades earlier, the government began a nationwide project to build fallout shelters known as vaults. Instead of these being a method for repopulation, vaults were subject to secret and unethical experiments designed to test differing conditions on the inhabitants. When starting a fallout game, you usually begin in a vault before heading out into the big open- Fuck my life. Ooh, I suck at reading this shit, yeah. Subscribe to Chuncholsku. You usually begin in a vault before heading out into the big open worlds the games are known for. There are many different choices that you can make, as well as factions that you can join, making for a lot of room for diversity. Fallout also has a system known as VATS, which allows you to slow combat down and target specific parts of an enemy. Remember those limbs we were talking about earlier? <laughs> Number three!
You know, for this entry, I'm gonna share a memory with you. I really enjoy it when two of my favorite things come together. Mashups have been the stuff of legend since forever ago. So when it was announced that Disney and Square were gonna make an RPG, I was like, yeah! Wait, what? How on earth is this gonna work? Oh my god, is that Donald and Goofy fighting Cloud and Tifa? This is gonna be terrible! Can't mix Final Fantasy with cartoony characters? It just doesn't work. I mean, yeah, terrible idea. A actually, this looks... This looks pretty good. Wait, hold up. No way. You can fight Sephiroth? No, uh! Take the money. Take all the monies. Take it all. Kingdom Hearts ended up being one of the most amazingly awesome games I've played. The series mainly features worlds from Disney films which are heavily explorable. The main character, Sora, accompanied by Donald the Mage and Goofy the Tank, must visit these worlds and interact with popular Disney characters in order to save them from classic villains as well as a mysterious force known as the Heartless. The main title games utilize a third-person fighting system that takes place in real time, engaging your enemy directly with attacks and magic, which are executable during or after your battle. A couple of the games change to a COD-based battle system, though I'm not much of a fan of those. These games have been so popular they've branched off into soundtracks, toys, as well as manga series and novels. Don't you devs worry about the release date for Kingdom Hearts 3. Just make sure it's a damn good game. Number 2! Alright, the runner-up. There's a lot of places your RPG adventures can take you, but after you've slain all the monsters, saved the planet, how can there be anything- Oh, snap! Diablo is an action role-playing hack-and-slash dungeon-crawler video game series developed by the folks at Blizzard Entertainment. Made up of three core games, Diablo has captivated people since its initial release in 1996. The series takes place in the world of Sanctuary, with all three games in similar geographic areas, with common areas such as the town of Tristam and Mount Area, the home of the Barbarians. You also get to dive into both the High Heavens and the Burning Hells. The battle between humans living on Sanctuary and the Prime Evils is the mainstay of the series. The humans are occasionally aided by the angels, notably the Archangel of Justice Teriel, who has not only saved the people, but has also sacrificed much for the greater good. One of the best things in the series is the search for epic loops. Items are randomly generated and usually have many attributes that are also randomly generated. While this can slow progression a little bit, it makes it super exciting when you get that incredibly rare near-perfect weapon to flesh out your build. The maps in the world are also typically randomly generated, which really helps the grind and increases the game's replayability by a drastic value. The games in the Diablo series have been well received by critics. Diablo 2 sold 4 million copies in the year it was released, Diablo 3 sold 3.5 million copies in the first day, and 6.3 million in the first week. There's also been several books and comics that flesh out the story and lore of the world. Hopefully Diablo 4 will be able to live up to the hype. Now before we get to our top spot, I want to give a shout out to a few honorable mentions. So let's take a quick look at some games that almost made the cut. Number one! Being the big kid on the block isn't easy. When you get to being one of the leading creators of a genre, there's a lot of pressure to get things right. And you all better believe that Bethesda kicked some serious booty with the Elder Scrolls series. Starting with Arena in 1994, the series has produced a total of five main games and tons of spin-offs. The series is known for its elaborate and richly detailed open worlds and its focus on freeform gameplay. Morrowind, Oblivion, and Skyrim all won Game of the Year awards from multiple outlets. The series has sold more than 50 million copies worldwide. The Scrolls series are set in a mix of early or pre-medieval real-world elements, usually involving a Roman Empire in a world with very limited technological capabilities, and high fantasy elements like widespread magic use, travel between parallel worlds, and tons of mythological creatures such as dragons. Bethesda has stated their motivations in creating the series by saying that they wanted to play it to be able to be what they want to be and do what they want to do, and they absolutely shine in this regard. At E3 2016, Bethesda Studios director Todd Howard claimed they were already making a sixth game, but that it would still be a long way off. However, in 2017, Bethesda stated that no new title was in development. Looks like it'll be a few years before we get to journey back into the world of Tamriel. 
So that's it, our picks for the top 10 action RPG series out there. What did you think? Did we miss anything? Maybe there's an action RPG that you wanted to see that we missed. Feel free to let us know in the comments below what your favorite action RPG of all time is. I'd like to thank Freezy Pop for stopping by and being a part of this top 10. Well everyone, if you enjoyed this video then be sure to leave it a like. And make sure to subscribe to Chunchosku and turn notifications on so that you never miss any of his awesome content, including such things as more of these awesome top 10s and Oolong and Broly content. And don't forget to check me out because there's a link in the description description down below to my channel. Alrighty guys, if you have any suggestions in the top 10 list I should do in the future, let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and share it around social media if you can. It really helps out. Remember to take care of each other. I'll see you all next time. Take care. Ha 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 ha! K-Boy!